What's happening, y'all? DKB here. Free safety news. I got you covered, and we got a very interesting situation shaping up. So we talked about it before. I thought that we might have a two-headed battle between LaMarcus Joyner and Jason Pinnock to hold down the free safety spot. But it turns out, based on some recent reports, that we may have a third competitor in the ring. And even more so, this might mean that LaMarcus Joyner is actually on the outside looking in in this battle. So per the reports, and I believe it was Connor Hughes that made most of these mentions, Ashton Davis has been all over the field making plays. He might have actually been one of the best standout players on the defensive side through these last two weeks of practice. Now, if you guys keep this in mind, at one point, this guy was the highest rated, you know, defensive back that we took prior to Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Um, of course, he was a third rounder, I believe it was. But nonetheless, the scouting report on him was essentially that he had all the physical tools. He can run. Um, he can, uh, you know, attack the uh, excuse me. He can attack the run game. He has the speed to him. He was able to make plays and pass coverage. And his pedigree came as a blue nose. Uh, you know, put your head down, work kind of beast. He walked onto his team. He was able to get himself a scholarship and then, you know, play himself into that third round selection. So I'm actually very peaked. Uh, you know, my interest is peaked that Ashton Davis is receiving this much praise. He might actually have been the best defender during these last two weeks of OTAs, according to the reports. So what does this mean? There's a few things to consider. We know that uh, Jason Pinnock is really only getting the starting reps, essentially, most likely because LaMarcus Joyner is recovering from injury. Um, Ashton Davis also has been playing with uh, the second string primarily, so he hasn't quite earned those starting reps uh, in the OTAs per se, but he's doing exactly what we need him to with those second string reps, which is to make it known Keep in mind, his first two seasons, he's been littered with injuries. He's been trying to recover. He's never, it's, it's weird because he's essentially the Denzel Mims of the, the secondary. He's never had a healthy offseason with us. Um, he's gone, of course, through the Adam Gase era on to what we have now. And he just wasn't really able to stay on the field. And even when he did have a little bit of success last season, um, I believe he made a pick or two, got a couple pass breakups uh, and a handful of plays where he might have made a nice stop. But You've seen all of the issues with him not being able to really see the field where he took extremely bad angles. The tackling was pretty poor at certain points. And it seemed more so like he kind of padded his stats based on just generally being around the ball, which I was able to live with. If he was at least able to get on the field and be around the ball, I can make, you know, I can do deal with that. Um, but we all essentially believe that he was either going to be a cut or a trade or relegated to special teams if he somehow made the roster. And it now looks like he may have the opportunity to push to be the second string, which we would all love. It's another boost to Joe Douglas and him trying to um, pull everything out of the draft classes that he has. 2020 being that one that, uh, you know, has that asterisk next to the mark for him. But again, personally, you guys have heard me say this before. Adam Gase had his thumbprints all over that still. Um, and Joe Douglas just happened to oblige, in my opinion. But that's hearsay. Now, what does this mean for us? If we can walk into the season with a combination of Jason Pinnock and Ashton Davis starting, LaMarcus Joyner suddenly becomes kind of a trade candidate. It's un unlikely we will really be able to move him, but do we want to continue this wholesale youth movement where we actually cut ties with LaMarcus Joyner, we roll with Ashton Davis and uh, Jason Pinnock there and kind of hope that you know, Jason Pinnock having a, a full offseason playing this role and being able to focus focus on this helps him out. Uh, and he lets his natural athletic traits, uh, you know, help lead the way to success for him. Same thing with Ashton Davis, not quite as explosive and, you know, speed wise as uh, Pinnock. But we did pick him up purely off of his athletic capability and the fact that we knew he was going to go to work and hopefully improve the same way he did in college. Um do we lead the way with them or do we maybe try to carry an additional member on so we can make room for Ashton Davis and hopefully he continues to progress and take snaps away from a Marcus Joyner uh, during the course of the season? It's a very interesting debate. At this point, LaMarcus Joyner kind of needs to hope that he can make some things happen by training camp for himself because he is he might just by uh, you know virtue of not being able to get out on the field potentially be at risk of losing his spot. So at the end of the day, uh, I'm very curious, what are your guys' thoughts? You know, Ashton Davis being a riser during OTAs, 
Um, does this change how we feel about the second, uh, excuse me, the secondary, specifically that safety spot at free safety? Or do we still feel like maybe LaMarcus Joyner needs to be kind of splitting snaps uh, with Pinnock as a starter and uh, Ashton Davis still needs to prove something? Uh, preseason should be very telling for us in that aspect as well as the joint practices. But uh, let me know your thoughts. Catch you guys again. Peace.